everyone. Welcome back to the channel and to something ever so slightly different because today I'm in an Abarth UK, a Bath 595 Scorpion Neuro, and I'm really sorry if I can't get that pronunciation right. Now, this is a very striking looking car with uh, Scorpion black paintwork and Formula Gold wheels and accents all over, even carried into the car here on the seats. Now the reason for that is because this is a one of 2000 limited edition a Bath 595. The likes of which I was excited to get my hands on when a Bath UK said they had one available for a couple of weeks. So today is actually my last day with the car. It goes back to a Bath UK tomorrow and I have had about two weeks or so with the car now. So I thought what I'd do is put together the best sort of review that I can do and consolidate sort of all my experiences with it over the past couple of weeks and give you an honest opinion of what I think about the car. Now I must give a big appreciation to Bath UK for lending me the car and supporting the channel by giving me some great content to film but that's not going to stop me from being totally honest about what I think about this car because I do think it is flawed in a number of ways to the point where let's say I wouldn't be jumping out of my skin to get back in one. So right off the bat, I want to say I completely appreciate these cars are very, very popular, much more popular than the likes of my current two cars that I own, like the Z4 and the 7 Series. These things almost have a bit of a cult following. And there's obviously a reason for that. They're obviously very well loved. But from where I'm sitting, I might have a slightly different perspective on what these cars are like, given what I've driven before and what I own currently. And so I just want to say that this is my opinion. And of course, my opinion doesn't mean you shouldn't go out and buy one of these cars if you think it's right for you. So we'll get on to some really good points about this car soon. But as we're now sitting on the A3 at 70 miles per hour, it just draws me to the first couple of problems with this car. I mean, yes, it's a small car, but the, the noise in here is quite high. Considering I'm actually only doing 65 miles an hour, the wind noise is quite high. You might also notice that I'm bumping around all over the place. Well, that's because this car has an unforgivably firm suspension setup. It's honestly one of the firmest cars I can imagine driving. I mean, I just got out yesterday of an Audi R8 GT Spider, and that, to be honest, felt better than this. It really is, and that's why I say unforgivably firm, because it is just that. It's very, very firm, and I can't quite understand why it's so firm and how that actually improves the car. Also, although we're now just off the A3, at 70 miles an hour, we're at around 3,000 RPM. So we only have five gears in this car. There's not a sixth speed. But I don't think this car is designed to be a big long distance car. say the suspension only gets worse when you get off the dual carriageway and onto a b road as well i mean it's like it's like being sat in a wheelbarrow and being pushed along a load of coal it's really i don't know how to describe it it's so so bumpy and so so unforgiving it makes my bmw z4 feel like i'm flying along on aladdin's carpet on the contrary i think this car looks absolutely fantastic and if you want to know more details about why that is and exactly what makes this car so unique in the way it looks go and check out my other video which i filmed with the car literally giving an overview of all of those things i'll leave a link on the screen now but the car does look fantastic i think it really stands out amongst its competitors i mean something like a ford fiesta st i think this looks miles better it's got so much more character in the way that it looks and these seats in particular are absolutely fantastic i think they're stunning to be honest and that's the thing actually while we're going on and on about suspension these seats themselves are pretty comfortable i just think it's largely let down by the suspension setup and there is obviously a reasoning behind it it's meant to be quite pointy and track focused in a way but for me it's just way too firm These cars do have great pickup though. This is slightly detuned compared to the Competizione, 
at only 165 horsepower as opposed to that 180. However, they just have a way of picking up speed really, really nicely. Not in a way that's terrifying, but in just a really nice progressive way. The turbo lag is absolutely there, but once you're above 2000 RPM or so, as I can see from my gauge, you're always in the boost. And the power does come on quite nicely, even when in a high gear at fairly low speeds. The steering then is another thing that I actually enjoy with this car. It's got the classic and actually quite exaggerated torque steer that you get from front wheel drive cars, but in this it's a lot worse or a lot more apparent than in the likes of a Fiesta ST, in my opinion. Certainly in sport mode, when you floor it around a corner, the steering really tries to fight you to do anything but where you're really trying to go. And I don't know if that's something I like or something that I actually really dislike, but it certainly does give it a little bit of a challenge when you're behind the wheel to keep it going where you want. And I think, honestly, that's part of its character. One thing I've noticed quite a lot since having this car, because I've been posting it on Instagram and the likes of social media over the couple of weeks or so I've had it, I've had a lot of messages and comments that just simply say, well, it's just a Fiat 500. And that really annoys me. I think that must really annoy you if you're an owner because it really isn't a Fiat 500. It's everything but a Fiat 500. Yes, it's based off the shell of a Fiat 500 and they even leave the 500 badging there on the dash cover, but it is everything but a Fiat 500. From the second you get in it, it's not a Fiat 500. It's something that you do have to fight down a road like this. And it is quite an enjoyable experience. I just don't quite know if I like it or not. It's very strange. I've been disappointed by this car in the city as well. Mainly because of what I've touched on several times now, the ride quality just being so rough. I was hoping where I'm living now in the outskirts of London, where we have lots of 20 zones and speed bumps, that this would be a great little thing to pop to the shops in because I have been using my 760 Li, my 7 series with a V12 for my daily duties. So I thought this would all, you know, one, one provider, an economical alternative to that, but also just be a quite nippy little thing, easy to park, great to glide over through the city streets. But because of that ride quality, it's you have to go sideways over speed bumps, otherwise you feel like the whole front of the car is going to come off. It's surprisingly bad, and it's been a real shame because I was hoping to use this car a lot more, but it's just too rough. It's just too rough for my liking. And that's fine because as I currently have it, I have a BMW Z4 or 7 Series and this on the driveway. If this was your third car, well, there's certain occasions where I think I would choose to take this. I'm actually quite, you know, I was going to sit here and say that on the B road it's bumpy and it's steering gets away from you, but I have to say I'm quite enjoying it on the B road. So I think on certain occasions, if you've got a twisty blast down somewhere, it would certainly be between this or the Z4 for me, but I, I think there would be occasions where you'd want to take this. I just can't see quite where it fits in as a city car, certainly if there's speed bumps around you. I mean, yes, it's easy to park. This one has a pack with parking sensors on the back, which is great. So it's super easy to park and navigate, but just that ride quality ruins it for me. And compared to the Competizione that I had before, that was the thing I didn't like about that so much was the ride quality, but it's just no better on this, if not worse. But back to the good, I mean, it looks fantastic. I think if you gave me the ultimatum between this and a Fiesta ST, I'd choose this every time. It looks so much better. When you're sitting in here, because of, for example, this is a one of 2000 car, so you've got a plaque down here, you've got the embroidery on the seats, you've got big, nice displays. This one's got Apple CarPlay and a good sound system as well, which is a nice bonus. And I love the turbo gauge right in front of you here. It reminds you that you are in something a little bit leery. And I think for me, it just has a lot more character than the Fiesta ST. And I think ultimately, that is why these cars sell so well, is the character. The Italianness of it is definitely carried through into the Abarth brand. And I, I do love it. I love the Abarth brand. I just have a little bit of an issue with the way the suspension is set up on this car, as I've said several times. So I totally get why these are so popular. I just wish this had some sort of adaptive mode, maybe integrated with the sport functionality, where you could just use it and be a little bit more comfortable. It's a car that also conflicts me as well because I can't work out if it is designed to be a driver's car or not. For example, 
the things that you touch as a driver in this car of a really nice quality. The steering wheel is, is trimmed in leather and it's, it's lovely to hold and lovely to use. The gear stick, although in a strange position, actually you get used to it relatively quick. And it is a lovely throw actually, I have to say, I do really enjoy the shift on this car. The handbrake covered in leather, the doors here where you'd rest your elbow, leather, or at least a, a leather effect. So everything you sort of touch as a driver is great. However, the seating position is just fundamentally wrong. The gear stick, although I just complimented it, it is in an odd place. But I mean, having said that, people will say the Carrera GT is one of the best cars ever made and the gear shifts up here somewhere on that. So I wouldn't really go on about this too much, but it's weird because the driving position is just so wrong. You sit so high up, you feel like the car's gonna topple over on you at any point. And I just can't. Having had this car for two weeks, honestly, I've been, every time I've got in the car, I've adjusted the seat somewhat because I just can't get the right position. The steering wheel, unfortunately, is only adjustable up and down. You can't bring it closer towards you. And I think if I could bring it out towards me a little bit more, I could sit further back in the car and be a little bit more slung back. But really, the closest thing I can compare this to is driving a van. I'm sitting on top of the car and it's, it's an odd sensation. Again, I think it, it does tie in nicely with the character of the car but fundamentally, as a driver's car or even a track weapon that some people describe this thing as, it's just wrong. It just is wrong and you're not gonna be able to feel the car as much as you will, something that's slung back where you sit right back with a better center of gravity and more feel through all of the controls. But I think, again, by going on about all of this, the owners of this car and the people in the community will tell me I'm missing the point. And the point really is what I've touched upon as being the positive of this car. The great positive of this car is its character and the way, I say it makes you feel when you drive, not so much, but knowing that this one looks like it does, it does get looks and I do quite like that because I think it's a great looking car. Comparison to the Competizione that I had with the Monza exhaust, this sounds nowhere near as good, which is also a shame because I remember the sound of that Competizione sort of made up for a lot of the shortfallings in my opinion that this car had. I really enjoyed just the sound of it. Just when you're letting off the clutch and going into the power, it's got a really nice deep burble to it that I really enjoyed. And this, although it still has it, is far, far less pronounced and you just don't get the same sort of satisfaction from the sound of this car. I like how the displays change between sport mode and when you go into normal mode here, there's some more information. I wish there was a little bit more functionality on here. And also I genuinely prefer the display that's not in sport, but you do find yourself wanting to drive this car in sport. Like I say, my biggest problem with this car is just that suspension setup being a little bit, well, a lot, a lot too firm. It's unnecessary. It just feels unnecessary. I don't feel like it, gives me any more driving feel by being that way. So for me, that's the biggest letdown and almost, I'd say in itself, enough for me to just not consider one of these cars. But in conclusion, it's a car that I totally sort of get but I do totally understand why other people love them. I do get it in that sense. And it's fun. It's a fun little car. It wouldn't be top of my list if I could only have one thing. I would personally go for something rear wheel drive with two seats. It gives you way more driving feel and, and pleasure. But I do get the idea with these cars and I think they're really cool things. And I have to say, I'd be deeply, deeply saddened if for whatever reason, I no longer saw them on the road. I do really enjoy them. So. I have really enjoyed having it on my driveway, but mainly to look at. I haven't found myself getting the keys to this over my other two cars as often as I thought I might have done, which has been a shame. But needless to say, I'd be genuinely interested to hear from you guys. Um, I wanna hear from a Bath owners as well, and I want you guys to correct me, you know, where there's things I've said perhaps that you disagree with. I wanna know why, um, because these are highly, highly popular cars, and there has to be a reason that maybe I just haven't quite got the grasp of yet. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please do leave it a thumbs up and support the channel by subscribing now. And um, yeah, please comment below and 
Tell me what you think. I would love to hear it. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you very, very soon.